Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Techno's product review. Power Queen is a discount brand that provides lithium iron phosphate batteries in a variety of sizes at a great value. I've already reviewed their 190 and 300 amp hour offerings and they work great. They're also pretty serious bang for the buck. Power Queen recently sent me their 100 amp hour version to try out. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside this 12 volt battery are 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate grade A cells rated at over 4,000 cycles to 80% capacity. As their size and weight is approximately eight by seven by 13 inches or standard 31 group size and weighs in at only 24 pounds. Inside is a battery management system rated at 100 amps both charge and discharge which is equivalent to 1,280 watts. That means you can pump 1,280 watts in and take 1,280 watts out. As for series and parallel ability, the 100 amp version can in fact be stacked four long in series for 48 volt operation, and then combine four of those strings in parallel for a maximum of 16 batteries at 20.4 kilowatt hours of power. As for the case, it is all ABS plastic all the way around, and it is completely sealed, allowing for IP65 water resistance. And while you can't submerge the battery, it is fully protected from weather, so it can, in fact, be used outdoors. And while the battery does offer overheating protection, it does not offer low temperature charging protection. As for features, it does include metric M8 hardware with the little plastic caps on them that are color-coded, and a nylon carrying strap, which can be easily removed. And Power Queen, of course, includes a really nice color user manual. You'll see color pictures and everything inside it tells you exactly what you need to do, what kind of application. All the information you're gonna need is in this user manual. As for the warranty, Power Queen does offer a five-year manufacturer warranty across the product line of their lithium batteries. And of course, I took the Power Queen 100 amp hour battery into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including a single-fisted, battery capacity test. As for the results of the DC battery capacity test, the Power Queen scored 104 amp hours out of a rated 100, which is typical for grade A cells. Usually they give you a little bit extra, so feel free to spend that 4% any way you like. So what about 24, 36, and 48 volt operation? This Power Queen battery does support putting batteries in series, and I had them send me two so that I could prove it. You can see there we're at 13.2. And there we're at 26.3 volts, so they are supported in series. So a quick lesson here, when you put batteries in series, you add the volts, but keep the amp hours the same. So in this case, you take 12.8 plus 12.8, you get your 24 volt battery, and it still stays 100 amp hours, but you take 24 volts times 100 to get the watt hours. So each one of these batteries are 1280, so when you put them in series, it's 1280 plus 1280. So you're still doubling up your power, but it's half the amps to double the volts. Now, if you put the batteries in parallel, which means you hook positive to positive and negative to negative, then you keep the voltage the same, in this case, 12.8 volts, but you double the amp hours, so that'd be 200 amp hours. So that's how that works. Battery discharge test. This is where we find out how much can we pull from the battery. Now, this has a 100 amp VMS. All right, we're starting at 100 amps. Let's go ahead and pump it up from there. And at 300, it shuts down. Okay, let's see if it will run 150 amps for five minutes. Okay, we're back, five minute mark. We're running 156 amps for five minutes straight. Start the test again at 200 amps. All right, there we go, 200 amps. Let's see if it'll make it to five minutes. Okay, at the two minute mark, the inverter started beeping, which means it's not getting the power it needs from the battery. I'm suspecting here that this battery is going to shut down at any second. And there she blows, just past the three minute mark, the power on the battery completely went out. You can see here, 
There's no display, that means the BMS shut the battery down. All right, we have a pretty fast recovery rate. It only took about three and a half minutes to cool the battery and allow it to power itself back up again. Charge rate test, this would determine how much power can we push into the Power Queen. Now this does have a 100 amp BMS that allows both charging and discharging at 100 amps for 1280 watts. Now for my setup, I am using the Sun Gold Power 4000 watt inverter. This is one of my newest pieces of equipment I got from SGP. Very, very nice, very powerful inverter. It has a 120 amp charger. This is a 20 amp charger, and this one back here is a 10 amp charger. So we should be able to push 150 amps in this battery or close to it. We're at 145 amps. Let's start the timer. Let's see if we can make it to five minutes. We're now up five minutes at 145 amps. Yes, it's quite loud in here. Every fan in the room is on. I'm gonna let it go five more minutes and see if it'll do 10 minutes at 150 amps. Okay, there we have it at eight and a half minutes. 150 amps overloaded the BMS and the battery shut down. Okay, we're restarting the test at 125 amps of charging. We'll see how long we can go. All right, 10 minutes in, we're still charging at 125 amps, so it seems like we can pretty much do this indefinitely. And that takes me to one final test, and you might be able to guess what it is by looking at this tool. So I did a couple of pulls and the majority, the slight majority, does want me to chop the tops off of these batteries. So, off with its head. Off with its head! I can't watch. Okay, at first glance, you can see here, this is where the heat sensor is. So they kind of just have it stuck there at the edge of the battery. Uh, not really the best place for it. I do have the BMS up here. It's glued down, so I guess I could probably try to crack that off. I don't know, getting these loose since they're glued together is kind of tough, but I'll see if I can do it. So I removed the two screws that connect the wires here to the main terminal and the BMS. So I'm gonna, should be able to just pull this BMS off. It's just glued on. I feel so dirty. Okay, so there's the BMS. I can't move it much further because this is glued in. Now I can see if I can take that apart. Okay, here's the BMS board. It looks pretty nice. It does use heavy 10 gauge cables, which is appropriate for this BMS. They're using all good hardware. Everything's glued down. Like even these edges here were glued down. Everything's glued, even the little BMS sensors were glued. You can see right here on the terminals, even those are glued down. So they're not taking any chances. Looks like the main cable is six gauge. Again, everything is nicely done. They do have it shrink wrapped. It all looks pretty good to me. Okay, there's the BMS serial number. It is dated 7-14-2022, so it is a modern design. But it's kind of surprising just how much wasted space they have in these batteries. I mean, look at these giant foam blocks on each side, right? Because they need to make them standard size for RVs. So it gives you kind of an idea what the cells look like. I'm gonna try to get these out. Moment of truth, this was a real pain in the butt. I've been using the screwdriver to try to loosen this foam. It's all glued in. Everything is glued to everything. There we go. I did kind of screw this up at the bottom with my screwdriver, so that's not, that wasn't like that. That was my fault. Now, honestly, this is as far as I need to go because now we can see what kind of cells they're using. We see what kind of BMS they're using. Uh, the construction is very well done. They are using what looks like aluminum bars to connect the cells together. They are welded in place, so I couldn't take them apart unless I wanted to break them. They have the electrodes here for the BMS sensing, also glued down again. Very good construction for such a cheap battery. So hopefully we can zoom in on that and get a clear ID of what these cells are. Okay, I scanned the barcode on the battery. It is a Ganfeng cell it's 100 amp 3.2 volts production july 18th 22 we can go to their website but it's all of course in like super chinese so that's what their website looks like i can't tell you anything else about the cells at this time now i was able to find these cells for sale it's 184 bucks for four raw cells that's no bms or anything else it does say it's grade a it seems like ganfen is a decent brand so now the fun part is i get to put this thing back together fully charge it up make sure everything is working properly 
and then either use it for a project around here or donate it to somebody in Quartzsec. Uh, please don't write to me asking me to send you stuff. I do it in person in Quartzsite, Arizona every January. So you got to come out to our camp and I'll announce it all in advance. There's going to be some limited stuff available for somebody who really needs it. I managed to get it all put back together and it is pretty much as good as new. I'm going to get top dollar for this on the used market. Look, the handle even still works. Hey, so what do I think about the Power Queen 100 amp battery? Well, it's a 100 amp hour lithium battery, so what can I really say about it? I've had a great experience with Power Queen products and their service so far. They offer grade A batteries at discount prices, making them a top bang for the buck choice. We did take a peek inside and the build quality is top notch. They're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Of course, I don't like the lack of low temperature charging protection, but there are workarounds for that. Now, what about the competition? There are probably more brands of 100 amp hour lithium batteries on the market than there are stars in the sky. Okay, that maybe that's just a slight exaggeration, but there are a heck of a lot. Uh, you have to remember that most of these super dirt cheap batteries, especially like the unquestionable websites and eBay and stuff like that, they're using grade B used or refurbished cells. So you really have to be a smart shopper when it comes to getting a good deal on a good battery. Now we have proven with the capacity test results and the teardown that the Power Queen does use grade A brand new cells. Otherwise it wouldn't perform the way it does. Now do remember, these drop-in style lithium batteries are not designed as car starter batteries, so don't buy one of these thinking you can start your diesel truck or your hot rod with it. You can use them for small trolling motors or other loads under 100 amps, and they will actually start most RV generators, no problem. The recommended inverter size for a single battery is around 1,500 to 2,000 watts. Now, even though the output is limited to 1,280 watts, you still want to have a slightly larger inverter that handles startup loads on things like air conditioners and refrigerators. Now, if you put two of these babies in parallel, you could run 2,500 watts, and in that case, I'd suggest a 3,000 watt inverter. I do have some recommended inverter models on my product page at hobotech.tv slash Amazon. Click on inverters. All right, so how do you charge one of these? There's nothing really that special about it. Any charger that outputs 14.4 to 14.6 volts will fully charge this battery. You don't need a special lithium charger or lithium solar controller. Just be aware if you kill this completely dead down to 0%, the BMS is going to shut the battery off, and then you'll need to jumpstart it back to life with another 12 volt source. And I do have a video step by step exactly how to do this. In fact, several ways how to do it. Most of the time your inverter will beep, go crazy and shut down before the battery drops to 0%. Now, if that's something you worry about, I suggest getting a battery monitor system like the Victron I use in my testing to prevent killing the battery. Since this does not have low temperature charging protection, if you do plan on charging it in below freezing environments, you're gonna wanna use an MPPT controller that can disable the charging in those conditions. I just recently reviewed a brand of controllers that offer this feature and I'll link that in the description of this video. If your batteries are stored in an insulated box like inside of an occupied RV, then you probably won't need a charging protection because it's really what's inside the battery. If you're using them and they're an insulated box, they're gonna stay above freezing. Okay, best part, product price. Typically this 100 amp hour version goes for $319, which in of itself is a fantastic price. But for a limited time, Power Queen is offering a discount code for viewers of the hobo, and that's gonna bring that price down to under 300 bucks. Yeah, under 300 bucks for a high quality grade A battery like this. That's quite a deal. Now I have reviewed their 190 and 300 amp hour versions, and they're all just as fantastic as this one. In fact, I like the 300 amp version so much that I put two of them in my toy hauler RV. And I ended up beating the tar out of those for the past several months in the desert, both hot and cold environments, and they work flawlessly. So if you're interested in the Power Queen 100 amp hour battery or any other flavor of Power Queen battery, the link and discount code will be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually along with a QR code that you can scan on a mobile device. It'll take you on over to the Power Queen store page where you can check out their full lineup of LFP batteries. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe.
and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Brian Lee, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Mark Steve Eisen.